Hello, I'm Pavel from Upsilon, and in this short presentation, I will tell you what is GXP in clinical software development. Let's start with the short introduction. What is an FDA submission? FDA submission refers to the process by which companies submit data and documents to the US Food and Drug Administration to gain approval for a product such as new drug or medical device. And there can be different types of FDA submission. It can be new drug application, biologics license application, pre-market approval, or 510K. How is GXP used in the FDA submission process? So GXP refers to good practice guidelines and regulations in various industries. And these guidelines ensure that products are safe, effective, and of high quality. And compliance with these GXP standards are critical. Uh, here you can see different types of GXP guidelines. They can refer to current, current good manufacturing practice, good laboratory practice, good clinical practice, good distribution practice, good pharmacovigilance practice, and good automated manufacturing practice. What kind of good programming practices are used during FDA submission process? So in some materials, you can also find name good software engineering practices. So you can treat them as synonyms. And during the FDA submission process, software engineering quality practices are essential, particularly when software is used in the development, manufacturing, or control of medical devices or drugs. And good programming practices con contain practices related to development, reproducibility, software validation, cybersecurity, access control, documentation, data management, software development lifecycle, and risk management. What's in good development practices? So everything starts here from the definition of done. When you define your done criteria and follow them, you have quality definition after every change to the code. It's also about version control. So you use version control systems such as Git to manage software code, to track changes and maintain an audit trail of all modifications. It's also about code review, so that developers review their code after every change added to the code repository. It's also build automation, so you automate the process of compiling and, packages, uh, and packaging software to ensure consistency and repeat repeatability. What's in good reproducibility practices? It's about version control, so you, it allows you to reproduce code state at any point of development, analyze it, reproduce it, or revert changes. It's about change control. So you have a process to document and track all software changes, ensuring each modification is reviewed, tested, and approved. It's also about dependency management. So all the libraries, packages, and environment used uh, to run the code are easy to recreate. And it's also about documentation. So you, you have clear documentation that allows you to run the code on other machines after many years with different development teams. What's in good software validation practices? So there is verification and validation. So you ensure that each phase of the development meets the specified requirements, which can be defined in your definition of done. And validation ensures the final software meets the intended use and performs correctly in real world conditions. In lower level of abstraction, you can treat uh, different. You, you can treat different methods of testing uh, to validate your code. So we can use unit testing. So uh, you have automated way to test every function in the code, which is referred as unit. You have also integration testing. So you automatically test every component of the system. You can have end-to-end -end testing. So you test the whole part of the system, such as graphical interface or API. You can have manual testing, so it can be performed by quality assurance experts. And you can have performance testing, so uh, you can check how your software behaves in extreme conditions. There is also risk-based uh, risk based validation, so you focus on validating software components that directly impact product safety, quality, and performance. What's in good cybersecurity practices? Uh, you have here vulnerable, vulnerability management. So you regularly scan and patch software vulnerabilities, especially in medical devices or systems with patient data. And uh, it's important to validate open source packages. We can only trust validated packages. 
Software secure software development. So you follow secure coding practices to prevent common security issues. What's in good access control practices? There's access control that defines roles and implement auth authentication mechanisms to control who can modify access or review software code and data. There is also audit trails. So you maintain audit trails to document who accessed or modified the software and system configurations, ensuring traceability and accountability. What's in good documentation practices? So you have to be sure that it's complete. So you ensure all software related activities are documented clearly and accurately. It's understandable. So this documentation, it will be review, reviewable by regulatory bodies and uh, you include their all test results, code changes, risk assessments, and validation reports. And this documentation should help you with reproducibility. So this clear documentation allows you to run the code on other machines after many years with different development teams. There is data management. Sometimes uh, you can refer to it as data governance. There is data validation. So you ensure that your data is accurate, complete, without duplicates, and it follows one formatting standard. There is data integrity. So you implement mechanisms such as encryption or hashing to ensure that data is generated, that data generated by the software is complete and secure. And you have data security. So the confidential data is protected. You have risk management. And here you have risk assessment. So you identify, assess, and mitigate risks related to software development, focusing on patient safety and data integrity. There is also a process called failure mode and effects analysis. So you can use it to analyze potential failures and mitigate risks associated with software use. What's in software development lifecycle? So the SDLC process has clear phases and it ensures that your software development follows well-defined phases such as requirements, definement, design, coding, testing, validation, and maintenance. And every phase is documented. So FDA, uh, can have traceability from the requirements phase to the final product. If you have challenges related to GXP, just contact us. We will be happy to help.